In New York City right now, there's a palpable tension among business owners, especially those who have built successful enterprises but find themselves at odds with the prevailing political climate. It seems that if you don't align with the current administration's agenda, you're at risk of having your assets targeted. This includes potential intrusions into your bank accounts, a concerning scenario for any entrepreneur striving to maintain their legacy amidst these turbulent times. The situation has drawn commentary from notable figures like Kevin O'Leary, the Shark Tank co-host and investor who expressed reservations about establishing data centers in New York. Despite the economic incentives like cheaper energy from Niagara Falls, O'Leary, among others, questions the wisdom of investing in a locale that appears increasingly hostile to dissenting business voices. This atmosphere of scrutiny has been exacerbated by the legal challenges faced by Donald Trump, with a $355 million penalty levied against him in a New York court. This fine, criticized by some as disproportionate given the lack of directly harmed parties, has sparked a broader debate about the safety and viability of conducting business in New York. The response from the business community, including insights from real estate developers and investors like Grant Cardone, mirrors Trump's own real estate experiences, highlighting a growing concern over what many see as punitive measures against nonconformity. Adding fuel to the fire, Governor Kathy Hochul's alleged comments about the power to seize assets of truckers boycotting New York have stirred controversy. While the accuracy of these statements is debatable, they've ignited fears over the extent of governmental authority and its impact on individual freedoms and business operations. The discussion extends beyond individual cases, touching on broader issues of legal precedence, governmental overreach, and the implications for civil liberties and economic freedom. As debates unfold, the business community watches closely, wary of the ramifications for investment and innovation in New York. Amidst these developments, the trucker convoy protest against illegal immigration policies serves as a stark reminder of the tensions between government actions and individual rights. The comparison to Canada's response to similar protests, where truckers' accounts were frozen, underscores the potential for similar measures in the U.S., raising legal and ethical questions about the limits of protest and the government's response. As New York Governor Kathy Hochul seeks to reassure business owners in the wake of the Trump verdict, questions linger about the precedent it sets and the message it sends to entrepreneurs across the state. Despite assurances, the concern remains that what happened to Trump could happen to any business perceived as out of step with state leadership. This concern is not without merit as the landscape for business in New York has shifted dramatically. The case against Trump, irrespective of one's views on his politics or business practices, highlights a potentially troubling trend of using legal mechanisms to pursue political or personal agendas. The debate over fairness, legality, and the future of business in New York is far from settled. As voices like Kevin O'Leary and Grant Cardone express their apprehensions, the business community is left to ponder the real cost of doing business in a state that seems increasingly willing to leverage its legal and regulatory powers in ways that could stifle dissent and innovation. In conclusion, the situation in New York City serves as a cautionary tale for business owners nationwide. It raises critical questions about the balance between government authority and individual rights, the role of business in society, and the importance of maintaining a political and economic environment conducive to growth and freedom. As the debate continues, the outcome will likely have lasting implications for the business landscape in New York and beyond.